So this here is a VR2 Hoople's Cat. Um, what is freedom to you? Uh, to me, it's a pretty simple question. Freedom is power. Uh, in all human mental construct, real or imagined, what one being is free. God Almighty is free. Why is God free? Because God is omnipotent. God has, is all-powerful. Nothing can challenge him. Therefore, God can do whatever he wants. God has absolute freedom. Everything else has limited degrees of freedom, depend on the circumstance. Um, North Korea. How free are the North Koreans? Well, not very, apparently, except for that Kim Jong-un guy. <laughs> He's pretty darn free within his little world of North Korea. He can do whatever the hell he wants, right? Um, you go to Russia, freest person in Russia, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> he has 70% approval. He has a great deal of power, and um, he can pretty much do what he wants within reason as long as he doesn't piss off too many of the villagers. Um, by far the freest person in Russia. In the United States, Donald Trump, no, no, no. Not very free at all because we have a very intense system of checks and balances, and not just within the government, but the ultimate check and balance, and that is what I call the angry villager rule, um, we the people. So, not that much power. So freedom is power. The more power you have in a particular situation, the freer you are. And power isn't just authority or muscle or money. It can be all those things, but power can also be not being noticed. You know, it's illegal to pee outdoors. All human waste has to go through proper processing and state approved federally, whatever, you know, whether it's a facility or a septic tank or whatever, it's got to be just so. So if I'm out of my farm and I'm a quarter of a mile from the house and I decide to take a leak, well, technically I'm supposed to walk all the way back to the house and all now, but I don't do that. I just pee on a tree. Illegal. But I'm free to do it because there's nobody out here to tell me I can't. No, but I'm not, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth monitoring and controlling. See what I'm saying? So there's a lot of different forms in which power can come. Sometimes power is just being invisible. Gray man, as it were. Um, now, in America, this is why people whose minds are focused on freedom you know, who, who value that very highly, automatically resist anything that expands government or reduces the individual rights of the individual. Because every single time a new bureaucrat is hired, the government gets a little bigger, the government's power goes up, and our power relative to that goes down and down and down. And so on it goes, until pretty soon we are reduced to just another ant in the ant hill. And we're just a number in a machine, and that's all we are. And um, we, uh, we don't want to be numbers. We don't want to be ants and anthills. We are sentient beings. We are human beings, not human cattle. So automatically, if the government's getting bigger, it's bad. If we're getting smaller, it's bad. And, and it is an intrusion on our freedom because it's a reduction in our individual power. Now, the ultimate version of this which surfaces most in our modern political climate is gun rights, the Second Amendment. And there's some history to that and some reasons behind it. First off, um, us being individually minded, you know, like a tiger. If you take a tiger's claws and his teeth, he's with assurances that you'll feed him good tofu every day and he won't need those fangs and those claws, well, he's not a tiger anymore, is he? He's not free anymore. He's now dependent on you. Um, that's thing number one. Thing number two is a large percentage of America, people like myself who can trace our ancestry back to the earliest days, long before the revolution here in, in the New World, are bred from people who didn't put up with that shit over in the Old World. People who risked life and limb to cross the oceans in primitive times and stake their claim in a new world. We are um, not bred from the same people who said, oh, that's okay, we'll just stay here and ride this out, or whatever. Um, we are ornery, we're independent, we're tough, and um, we come from long lines of people like that, who think in terms of taking care of themselves, and not in terms of um, being taken care of. Um, we're, we have sheepdog's nature and an explorer's nature. And... Um, so we are different from other countries. 
in a significant percentage of our population. And the last bit of that is the history of us and where we came from for those of, as a country, for those of us who know it. Um, King George, when he started hearing about these colonists complaining about taxation without representation and things like that, he started getting a little edgy. His freedom, his power to do whatever the hell he wanted was being challenged a little bit, in words mostly. It didn't start getting challenged with bullets, with actual fighting per se, until April 8th, 1775, when the king, deciding to squash this, or take this, uh, the teeth from the tiger of this rebellious talk, talk uh, sent his soldiers to Concord, Massachusetts, the Lexington. And he sent them there to confiscate weapons. He sent them there to take our guns. And that is when the shooting started, the so-called shot heard around the world, and that was the beginning of the fall of the British Empire. Um, we the people resisted. We were not going to give up our weapons. And um, the fighting started. Uh, the first American Revolution happened. And on December 15th, 1791, our founding fathers adopted into our Constitution the Second Amendment that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And they did this to ensure that we, the people, their descendants, like they, would always, always possess the ability to resist the tyranny of any government, foreign or domestic. And it's also, lastly, of critical and significant importance, especially here in America, because they paid a horrendous price for that freedom. And they paid, not just them, but their descendants and their descendants, all the way to us, generation after generation, has paid a horrendous price for these liberties that to hand them down to us, to give them to us. They are our greatest heirloom, our greatest treasure. And to just give them up after all the blood and all the treasure they spilled so that we would inherit them is just simply not going to happen. And so, um, so that's why our right to keep and bear arms is so intensely intertwined with our freedom, which is our power as individuals relative to each other in the state. Hope you found that eight minutes worth watching. Sorry I went so long. Have a good day, guys.